Redstone is kind of incredible, and I think part of this incredibleness is owed to the fact that it has so many different situations and problems in which the redstone componentry can be applied to, and it's that diverse range of applications that paves the way to create incredibly complex machines like these ones. Yet, yeah, I still want to point out that not every situation is covered by your standard top three rows of the redstone tab because sometimes you'll find yourself in situations where you need a little bit more of an exotic kind of material, like scaffolding. So, today we're going to be talking about the slightly more unconventional forms of redstone wiring. Alright, so first we have wallstone. It's essentially when you set up a tower of walls like this, and by adjusting the shape of the very top wall, you can actually change the shape of all of the walls below it, and this change can be detected by observers. Thus, this allows you to very easily instantly transmit signals from tall places to low places. A really good example of why you might use wallstone is for this giant elevator I designed a while back. Say you're on any floor, you could be on absolutely any floor, and in order to communicate to the bottom section that you're ready to pick another floor to go to, all you have to do is push this button. And what that is going to do is it's going to simply adjust the sticky piston, which changes the uh, structure of this wall and immediately communicates to the bottom computer that you're ready to go. Another really interesting facet about walls is that although they may appear to adjust all at the same time, internally they adjust from top to bottom. What that means is that if I have a setup like this, if you look at all these droppers, they're very obviously empty. And that's because these comparators are not lit, including this barrel at the bottom here, which is also empty. And if I go ahead and put a piece of paper into this top dropper, and I adjust this trapdoor, since all of these walls will update top to bottom, so will the observers, and so will the droppers. Meaning that our item is immediately accelerated to the bottom, because inside of the game tick, the droppers update the top one first, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one, so and so all the way until your item is accelerated to the bottom in one moment. Next on the list we've got rails, but I've already dedicated an entire video to why these might just be one of my favorite components ever, due to their unparalleled diversity in use cases, and just the incredible amount of things you can do with it. So, on to the next next thing, we've got scaffolding. You may have seen it used in this kind of setup before. And this is generally to activate something really high up, when you don't really care about speed, because this thing is pretty slow. The reason this works is because when this trapdoor opens, this scaffolding is no longer supported, and that is just communicated to all the other scaffolding, which causes an update, and observers can pick on that. However, this is not actually the way I use scaffolding. I am mainly here for the fact that every single piece of scaffolding updates one tick after the one behind it. And if you look at the lamps in, up here, you can see that each one has a slight delay between the next one activating. And this is actually half the delay that you'd get out of a normal observer chain. Now what this is really useful for is that you can actually get very high levels of precision, which I've talked about before, but just to show it off here, we've got a two tick set of repeaters here, and a one tick set of repeaters here. And if I push this button, you can see that this piston is clearly firing in between the two. So this is how we can kind of create a 1.5 tick repeater. Next, we have bubble columns. And the way bubble columns can be used in wiring is essentially just a instantaneously triggering tower. And I say kind of instantly with an asterisk, because although technically it's communicated instantly upwards, there's kind of a little bit of delay time where the um, bubble effect is actually applied. That delay time is kind of different whether you're removing the block or replacing it, but it can still be incredibly useful in a lot of situations. One really great example is ENXO4's raid farm because the bubble column that's installed in this thing actually both doubles as a way of installing the villagers as well as communicating from the bottom of the machine where you stand to all the upper modules and things. 
There's also three of them at the heart of this giant elevator I showed before, and that just kind of goes to show that bubble columns and wellstone really lend themselves nicely for incredibly vertical machines. Honorable mention to the very crude, but uh, definitely a useful setup where you just essentially throw garbage out of a dropper in the sky and have it land in some sort of trigger system. And although rudimentary, it's definitely still an optimal way of sending a signal from a really high location to a really low one because it's just that reliable. Something you can also do here is put powdered snow, which kind of eliminates the need to have some sort of exterior shield to kind of negate that horizontal velocity that makes the items fly off in random directions and not land in the hopper or string that you want it to. The powdered snow immediately cancels it and makes sure it falls straight every single time. Now we're completely outside of the realm of normal use. We're going to be talking about leafstone, and leafstone is essentially using logs and leaves to transmit signals. Despite the fact that player placed leaves actually don't decay, like normal leaves do, spawned by trees, they can actually still detect if they're being supported by logs, and this value can actually be detected by observers, which means we can use it to transmit signals. The only use case that it actually has is that it exhibits very similar properties to scaffolding in that it has that one tick precision but the only caveat is that it actually has some weird artifacting when you remove the log as you can see these extra lanterns get powered a second time it's kind of difficult to see but it's really irritating when you want to do useful things with it yet even the stupidity of leafstone cannot be topped by using instrument switching detection as a form of transmitting signals as you can see with this feed tape here, we've got moving emerald blocks and moving chains. And this is actually triggering this note block. And what's happening here is emerald blocks, when under note blocks, produce an 8-bit noise. Chains are exactly the same as air. They produce the standard note block noise. What's happening here is since we're cycling around these blocks, whenever there's an instrument present that isn't just chain and air, like an emerald block, it actually changes the instrument to 8-bit which can be detected, and when it switches out, can also be detected by this observer here. An album of mention goes to wall detection, which is basically the use of a um, wall block to detect when the block it's touching has transformed from either a solid block to a non-solid block, or a non-solid to a solid. As you can see, when I hold this farmland, it actually updates it. This kind of detector is actually integral to the operation of my hoe-based flying machine because it actually triggers the machine when you hoe this dirt. Anyways, that'll be it for today's video. I know some of these mechanics are definitely known to some of the more redstone savvy viewers of my channel, but I kind of wanted to bring up all of these sort of niche mechanics in their own video and especially scaffolding, because I definitely use that a ton, and I just want it to be known whenever I use scaffolding in any of my machines. So, that'll be it for today. If you liked the video, make sure to check out my other content, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.